Hey, what is up, everybody? Your Brave Slash here, and we are back with another tier thing. I don't know if I'm going to have a name. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick to tier series for now. Um, this is where I take in something that I enjoy and put them into tiers, because why not? Shit's fun. Like I, I love showing you guys what I feel about a series of things. And I figured what better thing to jump onto next, because I had mentioned it in my last set of videos, for like the six of you that actually went through and watched it, thank you. You guys are amazing. For the rest of you that didn't watch it, go back and watch it. It's fun. Um, I ranked a bunch of franchises. My favorite franchise of all time, though, is Assassin's Creed, and they've got a lot of games. A lot of games. Some I haven't played. Most of them I have. Um, I've played almost everything in the core series, except for one game that's technically, I guess, in the core series, but I don't, I don't know. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Anyways, so basically what I'm going to do, as you can see, we're doing Assassin's Creed. Um, we're going to take every single Assassin's Creed game out that's ever came out, whether it be a main console release, whether it be a handheld release like the DS or PSP, or whether it be a mobile release. And we're going to place it into these lovely tiers that you see here. The way I have my tiers set up, I have my must plays. These are for the more amazing of the Assassin's Creed games. These are the ones that I think are the pinnacle of Assassin's Creed. Then we have worth of play. Those are the ones that they're good games and they're worth the playthrough, but... They weren't like, oh my goodness, this is just absolutely crazy, insane for me. Um, underneath that, we're going to have Bad. Um, this is games that I just think weren't that great. Um, like, not terrible, but like, not really that good either. Just kind of in that, they just kind of, eh. Um, and then we've got the worst. These are for the games that I just think are like the worst in the series. Um, the ones I totally... I'm not into, even though I'll eventually still stream them or record videos on them because it's a part of the series. Um, and then you've got not an Assassin's Creed game. That'll come later. And then we've got never played because there's some I've just never played. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this started, shall we? Oh, and I'm going through them as well in the order that the game's released. So let's do this. So the first game that came out is the original Assassin's Creed. Altair is my favorite assassin. Um, the reason why, and it's going to be the reason why a lot of you guys didn't like him as an assassin. Um, a lot of you guys love Ezio because Ezio has a story where his family gets murdered. Oh, spoilers, by the way. There's going to be lots of spoilers in this list. But like Ezio, you know, his family gets murdered. He wants revenge. He falls into the League of Assassins, which his dad was in, and he eventually gets steered towards the right way for the Assassin's Guild. However, in the first Assassin's Creed is Altair, and the reason why I like him is because he has no flamboyant and out there personality. He's not, a, he's not looking for love. He's looking for answers. He's an assassin by every definition. He kills who he's told to kill. He doesn't complain. He questions, but he doesn't complain. He just does what he's supposed to do. No ands, no ifs, no buts about it. That's why I like him. Now, admittedly, as far as mission structure, it was kind of a, in, in retrospect, now that we've had so many games come out, when the game first came out, it was my game of the year. Um, with Bioshock not far behind. I mean, it was like by that, that much. The reason why Assassin's Creed, the first one, got pushed ahead was because the present day story with Desmond and Lucy, like the present day story was just amazing. It set the tone for what I thought was going to be the rest of the series. I loved them doing everything that they were doing through the crusades as far as everything in the past and the whole animus thing I thought was really cool. And it was just an amazing game. Now in retrospect, as I've played further down the line and more games have come out, they've done different things. Mission structure was in, wasn't like, an amazing mission structure or anything like that. Um, it was just a lot of sit here and eavesdrop on these guys. Go beat up that guy for information. Um, assassinate this guy. Assassinate that guy. Go listen to these guys. Go pickpocket this. Go pickpocket that. Eavesdrop on these people. It was it was a re repetitive process. Like 
you did three to five missions, you went and completed an assassination. Three to five missions, went and completed an assassination. Three or five missions. Now, I will say, the main fight at the end with King, is it Henry? Or whoever the King is. I can't remember for whatever fucking reason. My mind just went blank. Um, King Richard, I think. Um, you went and helped him out. And then to turn around and go back to Masaif, I think that's how you pronounce it. Or Masaf is what most people pronounce it. You go back to uh, Masaf, and all of a sudden you find out that your leader wants a, the piece of Eden to basically take over the world or some sh stupid shit like that. And you have to fight him. It's an amazing time. Great fun. So what do I rank it? Worth a play. I say worth a play. I don't think it's bad. Because you guys have to remember, it's the first game in the series. The combat was a little a little rough, but rewarded timed attacks. And definitely rewarded being an assassin more than anything, like sneaking up on people and doing your thing that way. Definitely rewarded that a little bit more. But yeah, I, I, I mean, it's a good game. It's worth a play. Check it out if you haven't. I definitely say play it before you play any of the others, because if you go and you play the others, and then you go back to the first one, you're like, oh man, this game sucks. But I promise you, the story should be enough to keep you interested some of you. Some of you don't care about story. The next one is Assassin's Creed Altair's Chronicles. I did a video series on this. It is a DS only game. It might have been on a mobile platform as well, but um, I played it on DS and it is, it was a mess because they tried to take the Assassin's Creed formula and put it in like some sort of weird 2, 3D-ish fucking setup and it was it was kind of sloppy. It didn't seem real good. They tried to give Altair personality. It was just, I don't know. It was it, it just wasn't very good. Um, I'm going to put it in bad. Not quite the worst. And you guys will be so mad when I put some things in worst below it. Because, anyways, we'll get to that. But it's bad. I wouldn't check it out unless you are absolutely a diehard Assassin's Creed fan and you're diehard about trying to play these, you know, every game in the Assassin's Creed catalog. Next up, we have Assassin's Creed Bloodlines. Never played it. I tried to play it. Tried to find a ROM of it. Couldn't find a ROM of it. Well, I found one. It's a PSP-only title, right? And it looked pretty cool. To my understanding, I haven't found a way to stream off of PSP or to record off of PSP because it doesn't quite work like everything else does. I just, I wasn't able to play it. I really want to because it actually looks like one of the better handheld titles. But never played it. Next up, we have Assassin's Creed 2. I love this game. I really do. Assassin's Creed 2 is probably one of my favorites. For those of you that were like, oh man, he just doesn't like characters with personality. No, I love, I love characters with personality, man. Ezio. Amazing character. Also set in the Renaissance period, which is another really interesting time for me. Um, they fixed the formula. It's not all doing the same three things, doing an assassination, do the same three or four things, do an assassination, so forth and so on. You actually ran around and did things that actually felt like a true open world game. It's just a great game. Definitely goes in one of my must-plays. As a matter of fact, if you have a chance, go out and get the Ezio Trilogy. The Ezio Trilogy comes with two, three revelations and the DLC for all three of them. Great game. One of my favorites. Not as much to say. Next up is Assassin's Creed 2 Discovery. Another DS title that actually looks similar to Altair's Chronicles. At the same time, never played it. Can't judge it. Never got around to playing the titles from... The DS and whatnot, other than Altair's Chronicles. Chronicles wasn't terrible. It just the combat was a little clunky and whatnot, and it just made me not really want to try out Discovery. Because I just felt like it really didn't add much to what I already knew was going on. Next up we've got Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Brotherhood is my favorite Assassin's Creed game in the series. What Brotherhood did was so you had Assassin's Creed, which was very basic, very cookie cutter as far as the way it started off. And then with Assassin's Creed 2, they added to it, made it a bigger world, um, added more weapons and armors and things, and expanded how you played the game. And then Brotherhood took it a step further. Now all of a sudden, you're able to recruit assassins. That's why it's called Brotherhood. You're able to recruit assassins train them up, get them to master assassins, and then you can bring them in to come in and do things and kill people. And man, so much fun. Um, another thing Brotherhood did for the first time was include a multiplayer. And the multiplayer had a little story with it too. You were actually playing 
in the multiplayer as an Abstergo agent that was basically training to become a part of Abstergo. And the way the multiplayer would work is you would have your character, like you would pick a character, and then everyone else that was playing would pick a character. And then they would put copies of all those characters all over the map. And you would be told you have to find this specific person to take them out. And you would have like a pointer, not really a pointer. It was like almost like a radar that would show you kind of which direction they would be in. And when you got into an area where they were in, you had to try and find them. And of course, they were trying to hide within groups of their own people. So you didn't know which one was them. And if you assassinated the wrong person, you automatically lost that contract. So while doing this, at the same time, somebody was hunting you. And then the person that was hunting you, they had somebody hunting them and so forth and so on. So everybody has somebody to hunt. Everybody has somebody hunting them. And it was chaotic and was an amazing experience. It's the only one that had the multiplayer in the game that I actually maxed out my level. I was actually really good at it. Um, And then there eventually came a time where everybody just played by running around all willy nilly and doing it, you know, just being crazy. And it kind of took the fun out of it. Um, I was going to go through and play this multiplayer for it as a part of like the story progression, because you get emails about Abstergo and whatnot as you're playing. So you learn a little bit more about the Templar side of the story. But unfortunately, servers have been taken down. There's no way to play online anymore. It's a bummer. But very good game. Brotherhood is my favorite in the series. We're going to put that under must plays. Next up, we've got Assassin's Creed Multiplayer Rearmed. Never played it. Um, The reason I never played it, it's an iOS game. So it's Apple iPhone only. And I don't do Apple products. I don't play iPhones. I've had one iPhone in my life. um, And I loved it when I first got it. And then I went from that to Windows. And I thought the Windows phone was a lot better than the iPhone. And now I'm on an Android. And I think that's even better than the Windows phone. I just, I'm not a big fan of Apple's products in general. Next up, we've got Assassin's Creed Revelations. Assassin's Creed Revelations takes the story of Ezio and Altair and kind of merges them. Um, like, there's scenes where, as Ezio, you're following Altair's footsteps, and you actually, like, see ghostly images of him and things like that. And it was really cool. Um, and, of course, present day, you're still doing stuff with Desmond. You're still running around exploring as Desmond in certain areas. It's Oh, real quick. Going back to Brotherhood. So in Brotherhood, there's actually a piece of DLC that's very vital to the overall story. This is why I say you should play the Ezio collection. I did not know about this DLC until many, many years after the game had already been out. And I caught a video that was like top 10 um, story-driven DLCs that were important to the game. And it made it on there. And I, was, and I seen what happened. And I was like, this was really a thing. But yeah, Revelations is one of the worst in the series to me. They took out the aspect of Brotherhood that allowed you to hire on assassins and send them out to do things. And their little mini-game thing that they included in Revelations was a tower defense game. And I hate tower defense games. Um, I think they're boring. Um, Best best left on mobile as free-to-plays. It was just not very fun setting up everything for the tower defense. Eh. It's, it's just, yeah, it's, it's one of my least favorite. I'm going to put it under the worst category. Um, and it was a bummer to see the Ezio saga come to a conclusion the way it did with such a bad game to me. Next up, we've got Assassin's Creed Recollection. It's another, I want to say iPhone game, if I remember correctly. It's something else that I never played. Again, if I remember correctly, it's on iPhone. Assassin's Creed 3, you know, it's ironic. Assassin's Creed 3 has two pictures. One, I couldn't get rid of one. I tried, and I didn't want to recreate this whole thing again. And yes, I made this. Like, I made this whole setup. Um, And I accidentally included Assassin's Creed 3 twice. But I'm cool with it. Why am I cool with it? Because this game is so bad, I could put it in worst twice. Here's why I don't like Assassin's Creed 3. This is the first time in three games that we play with a new assassin. And Altair was great. Ezio was great. And then we get Connor. And I don't remember if Revelations is the game where they start to deviate from the present day story as well, or if it's Assassin's Creed 3. It's one of the two. They start to deviate from the present day story, and they really are starting, at this point in the series, they're starting to take away the present day story. And they, they started doing that because there were a lot of people that were like, oh, we don't care about the present day, we just want to play the past. 
So I was not one of those people. My main problem with Assassin's Creed 3, and it pains me because it's supposed to be set in America during the Revolutionary War. And I was really excited to play that time piece, or that time era. But they gave us such a shitty assassin. Connor is the whiniest fucking character in the entire series. Like, yes, you start off watching your family die. And I understand the plot for revenge. But what they did was Ezio, his plot for revenge eventually evolved into just becoming an actual assassin. And he was there for the brotherhood. But then Connor, he's like trying to be steered by the person that's training him down the path of assassin brotherhood. Like, like trying to be a part of the brotherhood. But it never culminates into anything. He just stays a whiny bitch. And even when he kills the person that he's after, he's still whining. And he's just a bad character. Now, he has one of the coolest weapons in the whole series, which is the tomahawk. And the tomahawk is cool because the tomahawk has the Assassin's Creed symbol in the tomahawk as, the, as a part of the head. It's, it's actually really cool. Um, another one of my complaints with Assassin's Creed 3 is one of the things I love about Assassin's Creed is like climbing buildings. And jumping from rooftop to rooftop. However, Assassin's Creed 3 is set in early colonizing middle of nowhere America. So you might have a couple of one, maybe two story buildings here and there. Most of it's trees. I don't want to jump from tree to tree. I don't give a fuck about jumping from trees. That's, that's not my thing. I want to climb buildings and jump from rooftop to rooftop. And it was also the first time they introduced hunting as like part of a way to upgrade weapons and stuff like that, which at the time when it came out, I really wasn't into. I liked it more in Assassin's Creed Origins. But at the time of playing this, I just wasn't into that whole setup. Um, but yeah, I just, I was not a fan of Assassin's Creed 3 at all. Assassin's Creed Liberations. Um, I've never played Liberations. It's actually, if I remember correctly, it's like technically DLC for 3, um, but I kind of consider it its own thing. I just, I never played it. I, like I said, I disliked 3 and so much that I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to try Liberation. Now, I'll eventually get to it because I have it as a part of, you know, Assassin's Creed 3, and I'll go to play through it again. And yes, I'll even play through Assassin's Creed 3 in my, on my channel at some point. Black Flag. How do I explain this to you? I like Black Flag a lot. It's really fun. I don't like... I, I, I don't like it as an Assassin's Creed game. I think it is an amazing pirate game. But as an Assassin's Creed game, again, not a whole lot of things to climb from jumping rooftop to rooftop or anything like that. Um, Kenway as a character, again, now he, he definitely gets more into the Assassin's Brotherhood aspect of it than what Connor does. But even still, it's just it's like a lot of sailing on the open sea and ship battles, which the ship battles were the worst part of the game, in my opinion. A lot of it because I'm just not very good at them. But you eventually hit this wall where you had to go and do all the things to upgrade your ship or you weren't going to progress in the story. I love the sea shanties, though. Hearing your crew sing while you were sailing was pretty cool. Um, but no, I just... Even with him being more as a part of like leaning into going into the Brotherhood, it still, to me, just did not feel like an Assassin's Creed game. This game is specifically why I created not an Assassin's Creed game. After that, there's a little mobile game by the name of Assassin's Creed Pirates. Never played it. Um, I don't remember if it was just iOS or if it was iOS and Android. I just never downloaded it and played it. Um, either because I didn't have the option to if it was iOS only or... I just kind of passed it because I didn't like the pirating aspect of Assassin's Creed Black Flag because I just I'm not a I'm not a ship fighter. Um, but you know that and I, if I remember correctly, this one specifically didn't have really any story tying into everything. Um, it was just kind of its own little. It was basically just a pirate game for the mobile. <laughs> Black Flag Freedom Cry. I never actually played Freedom Cry. Again, I now own it and I will eventually play through it. Um, this is more. Technically a DLC to Black Flag, where you play as uh, the guy that kind of is aiding you throughout most of the game. But yeah, never played it. Next up is Assassin's Creed Rogue. Assassin's Creed Rogue is another game I've never played. The reason why I never played it, at the time, 
there was a game that came out for Xbox 360 and PS3, and then there was a game that came out for Xbox One and PS4. And I never got Rogue because I had gotten rid of my Xbox 360 and jumped over to the Xbox One by this point and the PS4. And so I never played this game because I didn't have access to it. With that being said, I eventually went out and bought it on the 360 because um, I had somehow come into having another 360. I was going to go ahead and give it a try. And then all of a sudden they announced it was backwards compatible. Not only is it backwards compatible, they've also did an HD remake or an HD re-release of it. So I'm thinking about picking up the HD re-release for it to check it out. A lot of people say I should play it. It's a very good game. Um, and I eventually will. But for now, it's under games I never played. I do know you play as a character that is leaving the Assassin's Organization. So you're playing as a Templar in this game, in the long run. Next up, we have a game called Assassin's Creed Memories. It's another mobile game I just never got around to playing. You can see there's actually a lot more Assassin's Creed games that I have not played than I have, it seems like. We're already at what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine games that I haven't played. Eight games that I have. And there's going to be a couple more that I haven't played yet. Um, I don't even remember what that Memories was about, to be honest. Next up, we have Assassin's Creed Identity, another iOS game I was never able to play because of iOS. Sucks, because it actually looks like it was pretty fucking good. Um, and hopefully they find a way to let me play it some other way. Next up, we have Assassin's Creed Unity. When Assassin's Creed Unity came out, it caught a lot of... It caught a lot of ire. And the reason why is it was broken. And it was broken to the point where it was almost unplayable. The whole thing for me, I didn't play it when it first came out. I played, I was too busy playing, I think, Destiny at the time. I was playing a lot of Destiny. I got the game when it first came out, Unity. But I didn't play it. By the time I got around to playing it, they'd already patched everything. And I played the polished version of Unity. I really liked it. I thought Arno as a character was very intriguing. Um, playing in the French Revolution was a very intriguing time to or setting to play. Also, if I remember correctly, Arno's girlfriend in the game was a Templar. And it was almost like a Romeo and Juliet style thing where they weren't supposed to see each other, but they did. It's It was just a very good game. And if you guys tried to play Unity when it first came out and it was a broken mess and it caused you to dislike it, I heavily, heavily advise, go check it out. Like, seriously, go retry it now that it's been all patched out. I'm going to put it under a must-play. And it was also the first time you were able to play an Assassin's Creed game multiplayer. They had multiplayer missions that you and a buddy could hook up on and go do, which actually tied to the story, too. So it was actually pretty cool. Assassin's Creed Chronicles China? China is the only Chronicles game I've actually played. And I'm going to put it under worth a play. And I'm putting it under worth a play because it's different in the fact that it's kind of like a side-scrolling game. And you're trying to avoid being seen. It's more like a puzzle game than it is an Assassin's Creed game. Um, you got to see and memorize patterns of guards and then try and find ways around them. And it, was, it was just a pretty interesting, an, an, an interesting play. Um, I never beat it. I eventually do want to stream it and get through it. And we'll cross that bridge when it comes. But... Wasn't a bad game. Definitely worth a check out. Next, we have Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Now, Assassin's Creed Syndicate is admittedly another one of my favorites in the game. Um, or in the, in the game. It's, uh, it's admittedly one of my favorites in the series. Assassin's Creed Syndicate was set in Victorian-era London. And... This is the first game you ever play where you actually play as two different assassins. And some missions can only be completed as one, some missions can only be completed as others, and then other missions you can switch between, switch between the two, pick which one you wanted to play with. But you played as Jacob and Evie Fry, and it was actually really fun. And you also get this like grappling hook um, weapon or gun to help you move around from rooftop to rooftop. I love the setting. It had probably my favorite DLC I've played in any of them, which was the Jack the Ripper the DLC, or the Jack the Ripper DLC. Um, great time. Again, one of my favorites, and another one I will place under must-play, because it is just fan 
fantastic. Um, next up, we have Assassin's Creed Chronicles India and Russia. I'm putting them both under never played just because I've never played these two. Since I never beat China, I never went on to play the other two. Um, I will eventually go through and play them. And I will probably, if it's anything like uh, Assassin's Creed Chronicles China, they'll probably go under worth a play. Um, but for now, like I said, I've just never played them. And that's that. Origins. Assassin's Creed took a year off, and they wanted to do something different. And they decided to go and tell the origin story of the Assassin's Organization. It was one of the best decisions that they've made as a company. Um, when Origins came out, I played it. And I never beat it. Now, here's why. I got halfway through Origins, and that's when I realized I was going to start streaming and playing through the Assassin's Creed series on my channel. And at this point, I decided, you know what? I'm going to stop here. I'll come back and start the game over when I get to that point. And I, that way I'm not playing through this entire game, it seems like, two times. Because, I, I mean, I put in a lot of hours into it and got really far. And yeah, it was just, I, I didn't want to do that again. But from what I've played, and the ties into it being the original origin start of Assassin's Creed, it was fantastic. The gameplay is amazing. The world is huge. The characters are actually intriguing. It was, it's just a fantastic game, and I cannot wait to get back to playing it. I'm going to put this under must-play because it is that good. However, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I've never played. I don't even own it. Um, I'm holding off until it goes on sale by the time I get around to actually playing it. The reason why I haven't played it is because I've already heard that it really does nothing to tie anything into like present day Assassin's Creed or anything like that. Like it's just kind of its own thing where it's like, this is an Assassin's Creed game, but really you're just playing in ancient Rome. So yeah, I've never played it. I'll eventually play it because if it plays like Origins, then I'll probably at least enjoy playing the game. But like I said, it's just up until now, it's just not, since it has no ties in to present day or anything about the assassins in the past. And I hear it doesn't until the very end. So, like I said, I'll eventually play it. Not least, Assassin's Creed Rebellion. Assassin's Creed Rebellion is a mobile game that I have played. I actually still have it on my phone. And you have these little chibi Assassin's Creed characters that are actually set up in, like, the Renaissance times. And you basically, it's a 2D side scroll where your character is running through a map and they have certain things that they're good at and certain things that they're not, you know, that they are specifically supposed to do. Like, certain characters are better at hiding than others and surprising people, and then other characters are better at running and climbing than others. And before you move on to the next section, you get to pick which assassin. You, you like. You take in a team of like three or four assassins, and then you pick which one goes into the next room. And once you get to the next room, that character goes in there, and, and you know, you're able to look in the room and see what all you were going to have to do, whether it was hide or spring a trap or something like that. So you pick a character that best fits that situation. However, each of your characters are limited on their special abilities, so you had to be real careful about which special abilities you used and when. Um... And at the very end, you got something specific for that mission, or you got something to help upgrade your characters. Um, throughout the game, you unlock more assassins. My only complaint with this game is when I first got this game, I thought it was going to be encompassing all of Assassin's Creed, and you were going to be able to unlock all the characters from the Assassin's Creed series, like all the main characters, but you weren't. Like, I think Ezio was the only main assassin in the game, if I remember correctly. I do have him, though. Um, I haven't played it in a while, but I definitely put this under worth a play because, like I said, it's a fun little mobile game. Like, if you just want something to screw around with and blow some steam, blow some time, it's a great game to do it on. It's it's a fun little mobile game, and it's free to play. So there you have it. All right, with that being said, as you guys can see, there's my tier list. Obviously, I have some work to do as far as the never plays. There's quite a few on there I'll never play just because, like I said, they're iOS games, and I just won't play iOS games. Um, like I said, I'll eventually get around to playing Odyssey, the two Assassin's Creed Chronicles games, Rogue, um, as well as Freedom Cry and Liberation, so those would all come off. Everything else, I probably won't, if I haven't already. 
Um, and like I said, not an Assassin's Creed game. It's only Black Flag, and for the reasons I stated earlier, I still think it's an amazing game. Don't get me wrong, it is a great game. It just does not feel like an Assassin's Creed game to me. Um, Revelations and Assassin's Creed 3 were the two I disliked the most in the series. I think they could have done better with both. I kind of wish Assassin's Creed 3 would have been taken place at a different time in America, maybe more during the industrial uh, industrial boom. And Revelations was just, it was sloppy. Altair's Chronicles was just bad. If you have a DS, I, I wouldn't even bother playing it. It wasn't that great. Assassin's Creed 1 and Chronicles China and Rebellion are all at least worth a check out. And... Absolutely. Play Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, Unity, Syndicate, and Origins. And Unity with an asterisk. Play it now that the patch has come out to fix it. As a matter of fact, they just gave it away for free due to everything happening that happened with, uh, was it Notre Dame that burned down? Um, they gave it away free. There's no excuse not to play it. Alright. If you guys like the video, be sure to slash that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. Thank you all for watching. I'm sure only my Assassin's Creed fans are going to come in and check this out, or somebody that might be interested in Assassin's Creed. Thank you all for watching. If you guys want to see any more of these tiers, setups, I know I want to do one for horror movies, um, but I really don't have any ideas as far as what other games I should play in tiers. So if you guys have any you would like to see, comment down below. I'll check it out. If it's something that I think would be fun to do, we'll do it. Thank you all for watching. I cannot wait to see you to brave people later. Take care.